Hi everyone, I'll be fixing Grub in Cache OS with a BTRFS file system. If it was working before and then you get this, or this, or if you're dual booting with Windows and it goes straight into Windows, then I'll show how you can get Grub working again. So to start, I'll be breaking my Grub. And so I'm at the Grub menu here, I'm going to boot into Cache OS. And I'm going to open up Dolphin File Explorer. And I'm going to go into the slash boot directory. And if I go into the grub folder, and here's the grub.cfg file, this is the grub configuration file. And if I delete this, delete, we'll say I can't delete it. But now open it up as admin. I'll put in my password, and now I'll delete it. Delete permanently, and if I restart, this is what I'll see. So back in the boot grub folder, and if I go back into boot, and if I delete the grub folder itself, delete, delete permanently, and I restart, and I'll get this. And back in Cache OS, if I go into the EFI folder and going into the EFI directory, and so in this directory, there's the boot folder. And this folder has an EFI boot file, and this is a fallback bootloader that is put into here. And if I go into Cache OS, there's the Grub X64 EFI bootloader. And then if I go into Microsoft and then boot, and in here it has the Microsoft boot files. So I'm going to get out, go back up on the boot folder. This file here is a fallback bootloader. In fact, it's actually the same file as if I go into Cache OS, grubx64.efi. As if I were to do a diff on it, open up a terminal. And so if I do a diff on it, sudo diff boot EFI EFI will be the boot directory boot x 64efi and I compare it against the one under here grub x 64efi put in my password and we see there's no differences between the two. So going back Going back out. And I'm going into boot, and then I delete this. Delete permanently. Going back out. Cache OS. Delete grubx64.efi. Delete permanently. And now there's no Cache OS EFI boot files. So that means there's now only the Microsoft directory with the Microsoft EFI boot files, which means that now if I were to reboot, it would boot directly into Windows as expected. And if you go into the BIOS, there would only be a Windows boot manager entry. So I'll be reinstalling Grub to fix it, and I'll need the Cache OS installation media, and I'll need to boot from it. So I've booted up the installation media, and I'm going to select Cache OS. All right, I'm in the live environment. I'm going to open up a terminal. And I'm going to sudo in, sudo su dash. I'm going to type in fdisk space dash l. And I'm going to scroll up and look for my disk. And I'm going to locate my EFI system partition and my Linux file system partition, which is SDA1 and SDA4. So SDA4 is my Linux partition and I'm using BTRFS. So I'm going to be mounting the root subvolume to the slash MNT directory or mount directory. So mount space dash O subvol equals at or root and then dev SDA4 and then to the MNT directory. And then if you have a separate slash boot subvolume, then you would mount it as well. So for example, mount dash O subvol equals add boot dev sda4 
slash mnt slash boot. So in my case, there's no boot sub volume. And if you're not sure, then you can check the FS tab file to see if there is one mounted in your installation. So you can do a cat mount and then Etsy and then FS tab, enter. And then you can check to see if there's one for slash boot. And as you can see here, in my case, there is none. And then now I'm going to be mounting the EFI partition or SDA1. Mount dev SDA1, mount boot EFI. And then I'm going to be mounting slash dev, slash proc, slash sys, and slash run, so that they're available as well. So mount dash b dev, mount dev. And then next is proc. And then sys. And then finally run. And then now I'm going to chroot into the mount directory. And then make the EFI variables available on my chroot. Mount dash T. EFI var FS. None. And then the sys firmware EFI. EFI vars. All right. And now I'm going to do a grub install. Grub dash install. Target equals x86 64 EFI EFI directory equals boot EFI. All right, so installation finished, no errors reported, so that's good. And now I'm going to make a new grub configuration file. Grub make config dash o. I'll put it to boot grub grub.cfg. And then it has completed and it has found the Windows Boot Manager as expected. And now I'm going to restart my computer and go into the BIOS. All right, we see two boot options, Windows Boot Manager and Cache OS. So I'm going to change it so Cache OS is first. And then save changes and exit. All right, Grub comes up and we see Cache OS and there's the Windows Boot Manager. So I'm going to boot into Cache OS. And I'm at the login screen. And now I'm going to check to make sure I can boot into Windows. Select Windows. And it's booted into Windows as expected. So that's it. That's how you can fix Grub and Cache OS with a BTRFS file system. I hope this video was useful. And I thank you for watching. Bye now.